So during the Jewish festival of Sukkot, uh, Jewish people and supporters of Israel around the world welcome the news that Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas, the orchestrator of the October 7th genocide, has been eliminated by the IDF. And I want to bring you the words of Douglas Murray, who's written about this and reflected on this in the New York Post. He said, war was never going to end without the death of Hamas leader Sinwar. May his nihilistic fanaticism die with him. These are his words. There was cautious celebration in Israel on Thursday as news started to filter through that Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar had been killed in Gaza. The mastermind of October 7th was among some competition the most fanatical leader in Hamas. In 2011, he was the most high level of 1,027 Palestinian terrorists released from Israeli prisons in exchange for one kidnapped soldier. His release caused huge controversy in Israel. Time would show why. Once back in Gaza, he became notorious for his psychopathic violence directed against Palestinians as well as Israelis. In 2016, he was involved in the torture and murder of Hamas's own Mahmoud Ishtiwi. He was always a f fanatic's fanatic. In 2018, he, he gave an address to the citizens of Gaza in which he said, we'll take down the border with Israel and tear out their hearts from their bodies. On October 7th last year, he made his words a reality. For many Israelis, the killing of Sinwar was always the most important signal that the war against Hamas in Gaza could be over. In the past year, the group's ability to fire rockets into Israel had already been almost totally degraded. In the last 12 months of fighting, Hamas had already lost almost all of its senior commanders. But as long as Sinwar lived, there could be no closure for the Israeli public. There are several immediate questions that will be on people's minds. For the past year, Sinwar has been believed to have been surrounded himself in the tunnels with, of Gaza with some of the Israeli hostages stolen from their homes on October 7th. Are they still alive? And if so, where are they? It is possible that Sinwar long ago lost track of which hostages were where, as Hamas and other Palestinian terrorist groups spread them around Gaza. Or perhaps he did, as was long believed, keep what he would have seen as the most valuable hostages, women and children, close around him. He was reported to move around the tunnels of Gaza with these hostages and a permanent ac accompaniment of explosives, so that if he died, they, di they did too. But it seems, based on early reports, that this was not the case. He died with other Hamas terrorists above ground. We know from written and verbal messages passed by Sinwar in the past year that he saw this battle as a civilizational one against the Jews, that he regarded any and all Palestinian civilian casualties of his war as necessary sacrifices, quote. His fanaticism may well have been one of the most important forces to have prevented an earlier end to the war and a deal to hand over the remaining hostages. Sinwar knew that he would not live if all the hostages were released. The fate of the remaining hostages will hopefully become clearer in the coming days. Perhaps now that Hezbollah's leadership is almost completely destroyed, sorry, Hamas's leadership is completely destroyed, there will be the kind of chaos that has broken out in Hezbollah since its leadership was also destroyed in the, come, in the recent weeks. The chaos could lead to further killing, or it could lead to people realising there is nothing now worth fighting for and that it's finally time for Hamas to bring this war to a close. It is known that Sinwar was a major block to any discussion even of post-war planning of Gaza. He had let it be known in the tunnels that he thought it shameful and, outrage and outrageous that some Palestinian factions were engaging in talks last December about post-war reconstruction. So there is likely to be a sigh of relief across the moderate Arab countries, as well as across Israel, that this maniac has finally gone to the dust. What it means in the short term is that an end to the war may finally be in sight. Israel's Prime Minister has made it clear since last year that he is interested only in total victory against Hamas. Many people said Netanyahu would not be able to achieve that goal. It seems they are the ones being proved wrong. In the longer term, it is possible that with Simwar gone, Israel and its regional and international partners will finally be able to imagine what a de-radicalised post-war Gaza might look like. But it's too early to have that discussion before any surviving hostages are returned home. And not returned as bargaining chips, but as a prerequisite to the IDF halting its operations. For now, there is a much wider lesson for the region and indeed for America. Sinwar wished to annihilate the state of Israel. He took his best shot at it on October 7th. Hassan Nasrallah also wished to annihilate the state of Israel. Both were also fanatical enemies of the West. Sinwar has the blood of many Americans as well as Israelis on his hands. Nasrallah also believed that he was free to murder and kidnap Americans, including 241 American Marines in Beirut. Both have now been buried in the earth. Will their fanatical, bloody and apocalyptic worldview die with them? It is possible. 
Observers often say that such fanatics are inevitably replaced by another fanatic. But Sinwar, like Nasrallah, was a fairly unique figure. Irreplaceable, you might say. But will people in the region, as well as the West, who fell for their bloody propaganda, now realise that their side is the losing one? It would be the best thing possible for peace in the region if they did. Figures like Nasrallah and Sinwar are not saviours of the Palestinian people. They were always the worst menaces to the Palestinian people, assuring by their actions that peace was not achievable and war would be the only end. Sometime in the past year, Sinwar passed a message through the tunnels in which he said, we have the Israelis right where we want them. He didn't. But now the Israelis have Sinwar exactly in the place he deserves. Not much comment to add on this one. Douglas's words speak for themselves. If you've made it so far in this video, I have a request for you. JTV has been having a really big impact in spreading the truth about Israel and creating positive associations with the Jewish people, Judaism and Israel. We've really grown a lot, particularly in the last year, and we're having a really significant impact, both for Jews and non-Jews. But I really want to take JTV to the next level so we can start to compete with the other big online media beasts that are often peddling anti-Israel content. And the way we're going to do that is to scale even faster. So I'd love to build a team where we have other presenters doing shows like me, that start doing documentaries, supplementary content, animated content, etc, etc. And to do that, I'd like to build a bit of a team. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one fundraising day, just one, where we try and build up some funding in order to fund such a team. Now, to do that, it's going to obviously require people to get involved. And I'm wondering if you would consider, if you're watching JTV content and appreciate what we do and want to help partner with us in taking this to the next level and spreading the truth farther and wider than ever before, I wonder if you'd consider partnering with us simply by running a page, a mini page on the fundraiser that we do where you just reach out to your contacts on that day that we choose to fundraise and see if they'll all chip in. If you'd be up for doing that, of which I would be so, so grateful, then please click on the Google form link in the video description of this video where you can simply just put in a few contact details. It'll be a very small commitment, as I say, literally just one day that we'll all agree upon as a collective community. But the impact is going to be so big. There's such strength in numbers. If we all pull together and do this, we can take this to the next level. And as I say, all of us can partner together in bringing and spreading the truth to the whole world. So please do consider clicking on that link, filling in the form, and I'll be in touch very soon to talk about the next steps. Small commitment, but a big impact. Hi, thank you so much for watching. To watch another one, click here. To stay up to date with all our content, click here to subscribe. And if you're able to, you can help support JTV to grow and grow by clicking join below this video, where you can become a member and get perks, including early access to videos and private live discussions with me. But most of all, you'll be partnering with us on our mission to change the world.